Good morning. Sunday morning. A blast rocked the Kerch Bridge, which links Russia and the Crimea Peninsula on Saturday, causing parts of the road to collapse. The bridge is a crucial military supply route for Russian forces in Ukraine. Fire and smoke were seen on the strategic road and rail bridge, which is the only crossing between Crimea and Russia. Video obtained by Reuters showed CCTV footage of the blast. Reuters was not able to confirm the date the video was filmed. It was not yet clear if the blast was a deliberate attack or an accident, but the damage to such a high-profile infrastructure came at a time when Russia has suffered several battlefield defeats. And it could further cloud the Kremlin's messages of reassurance to the wider Russian public that the conflict is going to plan. The Russian investigative committee said the blast occurred in a freight truck, causing fuel tanker wagons to catch fire on a train heading for the peninsula. It added that two sections of the bridge had partially collapsed. Sergei Aksyonov, the Russian governor of Crimea, said on social media that the road bridge was still intact in one direction, although he said traffic was suspended while the damage was being assessed. In Kyiv, the mood was upbeat. No one knows how it happened, this man said, but added that everyone had waited for it. We have waited for the moment when the bridge burns, and I think all Ukrainians waited for it. And we are very satisfied it has finally started. A Ukrainian presidential advisor posted a message on Twitter saying the incident was just the beginning. But he stopped short of saying Ukrainian forces were responsible for the blast. I think we should make it clear publicly so that not just Putin, but all the top Russian leadership, all the citizens of Russia know that if Putin authorizes the use of a nuclear weapon, uh, he's signing his own suicide note. And speaking of the system of justice, we are also changing, y'all might have heard that this week, the federal government's approach to marijuana. Because the bottom line there is nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed.
Moderna before COVID could very well have collapsed and disappeared. All that technology could have disappeared simply because there might not have been the venture capital out there that was prepared to keep backing you. Yes, what most people don't appreciate is we raised three billion US dollars to get the technology to this point when the pandemic happened. And we were expecting to raise a couple more billions before we're turning a profit. But you were looking for things such as hard tumors, how to break those down, things for heart disease, different things. You weren't necessarily looking at that time for flu type symptoms, were you? So we were working for infectious disease. So we had already a big portfolio of infectious disease vaccines. But to your point, we've always thought that this information molecule, the mRNA, could be a very, very powerful medicine that we inject in your body so you make your own drug. Um, and as you described, we have exciting programs in cancer, yeah, you know, in skin cancer. We're gonna have the data by the end of this year. We just presented two weeks ago at our annual R&D day, data in rare genetic disease where kids are unlucky. They get the wrong DNA for mom and dad, and they cannot make a protein that you and I have. So what we do, we design in the mRNA Instead of spike, so say you put in to make spike, like in the vaccine case, we put the instruction that you and I have all in our DNA. And we give it IV to those kids to go into their liver. And when the mRNA delivers the instruction in their liver, they make the protein that they are missing. And the early clinical data in terms of reduction of hospitalization is quite compelling. And so I think rare disease is also something we can do. As you say, cardiology. We have now in a clinic a uh, super exciting program when we inject mRNA in people's heart after a heart attack to grow back new blood vessel to help revascularize the heart. So it's a bit like science fiction medicine, but that's, that's what is really exciting to me. But the, the other side of this is that right now, Moderna, though it has this pipeline, has one commercial product, and that's the spike vax. That's the actual COVID vaccination. So that's the irony of COVID is it really has in some ways allowed you to go and develop these other areas because of the revenues that came through the door. You're 100% right. The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq, I mean of Ukraine. Our reporting, CNN's reporting and the Washington Post reporting suggests the prosecutors think they could, they have enough to charge your son Hunter uh, for tax crimes and a false statement about a gun purchase. Um, personally and politically, um, how do you react to that? Well, first of all, I, I'm, I'm proud of my son. This is a kid who got, uh, not a kid, he's a grown man. He got uh, hooked on, uh, uh, like many families have had happen, hooked on drugs. Uh, he's overcome that. He's established a new life. He is, um, uh, I'm confident that he is, what he says and does are consistent with what happens. Um, and uh, for example, he wrote a book about his problems and was straightforward about it. I'm proud of him. He came along and said, by the way, this thing about a gun, I didn't know anything about it, but turns out that when he made my application to purchase a, a gun, what happened was he stay, I guess you had, get asked, I don't guess, you get asked the question, are you on drugs, you use drugs? He said no. And he wrote about saying no in right. his book. So I, 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 have, I have great confidence in my son. I love him and uh, he's on a straight and narrow and he has been for a couple of years now. And I'm just so proud of him. If you don't get vaccinated, you're antisocial. This is what the Dutch Prime Minister and Health Minister told us. You don't get vaccinated just for yourself, but also for others. You do it for all of society. That's what I said. Today, this turned out to be complete nonsense. In a COVID hearing in the European Parliament, one of the Pfizer directors just admitted to me, at the time of introduction, the vaccine had never been tested on stopping the transmission of the virus. This removes the entire legal basis for the COVID passport. The COVID passport that led to massive institutional discrimination as people lost access to essential parts of society. I find this to be shocking. 
even criminal. Please watch the video until the end. Voor u, mevrouw Smal, heb ik de volgende vraag waar ik een duidelijk antwoord op wil. And I will speak in English so there are no misunderstandings. Was the Pfizer COVID vaccine tested on stopping the transmission of the virus before it entered the market? If not, please say it clearly. If yes, are you willing to share the data with this committee? And I really want a straight answer, yes or no, and I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Um, regarding the question around, um, did we know about stopping humanization before um, it entered the market? No. Uh, these, um, you know, we had to really move at the speed of science to really understand what is taking place in the market. This is scandalous. Millions of people worldwide felt forced to get vaccinated because of the myth that you do it for others. Now this turned out to be a cheap lie. This should be exposed. Please share this video. I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party that's under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers who are driven by cowardly wokeness, who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms that are enshrined in our Constitution, who are hostile to people of faith and spirituality, who demonize the police but protect criminals at the expense of law-abiding Americans, who believe in open borders, who weaponize the national security state to go after their political opponents, and above all, who are dragging us ever closer to nuclear war. Now, I believe in a government that's of the people, by the people, and for the people. Unfortunately, today's Democratic Party does not. Instead, it stands for a government that is of, by, and for the powerful elite. Now, I'm calling on my fellow common sense, independent-minded Democrats to join me in leaving the Democratic Party. If you can no longer stomach the direction that the so-called woke Democratic Party ideologues are taking our country, then I invite you to join me. sure that we're in a situation where we finally have action on guns. And by the way, I'm going to get an assault weapons ban. Before this is over, I'm going to get that again. Not a joke. And watch. And so I just think there's... Thank you so much for coming to this uh, press conference, almost 24 hours after the CEO of Pfizer, Mr. Arbold, Albert Borla, was supposed to be present in the European Parliament in the special committee to investigate what happened uh, during COVID. Yes, hello. Good morning from me too. So, yesterday's session of COVID committee showed yet again that EU Parliament is nothing but a gigantic show of democracy illusion to fool the peoples of Europe into thinking their interests were represented in Parliament. It is not, though. Not only do the invited panelists, such as representatives of pharmaceutical companies or ministers of health from the member states, not answer any of our questions. No, they continue to spread disinformation about the safety and efficacy of mRNA injections. They continue to lie about and downplay, outright deny the uh, harmful effects of these injections. They continue to keep, uh, they continue to, uh, keep to deny the people access to the contracts and they continue to let Ursula von der Leyen get away with not disclosing the texts exchanged between her and Pfizer CEO Mr. Borla. In short, they continue to demonstrate their utter contempt for the peoples of EU. We also know that as our economy has come roaring back, we've seen some price increases. Some folks have raised worries that this could be a sign of persistent inflation. But that's not our view. Our experts believe, and the data shows, that most of the price increases we've seen are, were expected and are expected to be temporary. Reality is you can't flip the global economic light back on and not expect this to happen. 
As demand returns, there's going to be global supply chain challenges. We've seen that in semiconductors, which are used in automobiles. That global shortage has slowed vehicle production, creating a temporary spike in car prices. That's a real challenge. My administration is doing everything we can to address it. But again, these disruptions are temporary. Just looking at the, the general agenda of the world, the green agenda, climate change, believe in it or not, climate change has one goal, to remove petrochemical from our, you know, um, from our energy, certainly, mm -hmm. but, you know, there's a lot more that comes with that. I mean, you yeah. got to make concrete and, and pharmaceutical products, but okay, we need to remove this. So that is by definition an attack on the petrodollar it is by definition intended to weaken the mm. u.s dollar well right there in the if you remember the first stimulus bill they were putting together the crazy trillion and a half the first one that didn't pass in there from elizabeth warren and bernie sanders was the digital dollar act there was some setup going on and i think ultimately the idea is and, this, and we'll get to the war part, but it's obvious. The idea is to create demand destruction, make energy so expensive that we'll go back into lockdown, mm. self-imposed, driverless Sundays, you know, carless Sundays, all this kind of stuff, moving towards our our green agenda. And everyone, I guess everyone's going to get a free electric vehicle. That may not happen right away, but I'm quite convinced that when all this when people have to start staying home and trucks don't drive and it's just too expensive, that's when the stimmy checks will come back out. Except this time, right. it'll be a central bank digital currency. It'll be the digital right. dollar. You'll have your, your special digital wallet. And then the control grid is pretty much class on most people who didn't prepare for this moment. I told my daughter and granddaughters, no serious guys in your 30s. Okay. Right? <laughs> no what? No serious guys in your 30s. I'll keep that in mind. At least. At least. I will never stop standing up for Big Pharma and Thank standing you. against my constituents. Thank you, Anne. If you need a single location to get cutting edge information and keep up with the rapidly changing world around us, tune into Grand Theft World, where a forensic historian and a logic professor break down the week's news in depth and in context. There's a ton more there, so go check it out. And don't forget to get your Freedom Vault on the homepage.